Hello everyone, it's Sean. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, got quite a few things going on. Well, actually, the radio I'm working on restoring, I've got a set over there. I've got all the parts I need for it. I just need to begin working on it. But uh, it's got had to take a side venture for it because I had this TV in and I started working on it. It's got parts on order and just came in today is something else from a customer. And uh, we'll be taking a look at this. Uh, it is another Clips subwoofer that needs repaired. Now, right out the get go, uh, I kind of want to make this known. If you have a subwoofer, or, you know, something like this, this big that you need repair, uh, just take the, you know, the power supply and the amplifier portion. It's usually screwed in on the back of the subwoofer. Whichever is the backside. Hold on a second. Let me pull this out. Here we go. This is better. Uh, Clips SW450. Just take this back plate off. Uh, unhook it from the speaker. And then the LED that's up front. All you got to do is send me this section, okay? Uh, the customer who sent this, I'm pretty sure he paid an arm and a leg to ship the entire speaker to me. I, I don't need the speaker or the box. All I need is your real components. Whatever is wrong with it, I can figure it out from there. And then it's not going to cost you so much in shipping. But uh, actually, I'm seeing a problem here. Yeah, I don't know. Well, unfortunately, that's uh, that's the cost when you super heavy uh, item resting on its feet. It looks like the feet actually broke off of this guy. Um, I have to take them off. I'll take them off and glue them up. Hopefully he'll he'll understand. I'll, I'll take pictures of all this, send it to him. But uh, yeah, just send these components to me. I I can troubleshoot it. I can get the the components replaced, whatever is needed. And I've got plenty of bench test equipment here that will allow me to see the uh, the signal and, and verify that the amplifier portion is working without the the box or the speaker. But uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to get this kind of taken apart and uh, I'm going to show these pictures, uh, share this picture to the customer and let him know that his feet were broken off. I'll glue them back together and I'll have them detached when I ship this back. But unfortunately, in order to ship this entire thing, now I don't pay for re the return shipping just so y'all know, know and understand this. If you send me an item, you're paying for the shipping and you accept those risks of what you ship, okay? And when it comes to return shipping, uh, that's a part of the final bill is the components, the labor, and return shipping. Okay, I don't pay for any of that. Otherwise, I would not make anything off of anything I repair because I, when, I just wouldn't. You know, I don't charge a whole lot for labor, but I wouldn't make any money if I was uh, paying for shipping. Now, anyways. Uh, let me uh, let me get this out of the case. I'm gonna take some photos for the customer and let them know that uh, the feet were broken in shipment. Uh, we'll have to do something to make this better to re when we return it. I mean, he get, he's got quite a bit of packing material in here, but unfortunately, that that amplifier is just too heavy to be shipped with the feet on. But uh, none of the matter, I'm waffling for a bit. Uh, let me get this apart and, and we'll take a look at it. Well, before I take it all apart, I went ahead and plugged it in with a spare cord I had and uh, powered it up. And yeah, just like the, the last one we worked on, you can see that blue light is just flickering. And then after a while, I'm pretty sure it will get steady, but. Uh, Maybe this is similar to the last one. Uh, we had an issue with that, uh, what was it? Either negative nine or positive nine DC rail. Uh, we'll find out. But, so it's probably gonna be a recap job and we'll go from there. But uh, now I've verified the condition. I can now take it out and, uh, you know, again, I didn't have to do all this. I could have just, done it with this but you know it is what it is uh, let me get this out and we'll start troubleshooting it well, it wasn't too hard to remove just like last time and I feel like I probably should mention look if you're in need of a repair uh, please visit my Google site site excuse me 
There is a link in the description to all my videos that will take you to it. There's a business uh, page or tab on off of the main web page. Uh, go to that page. You can read up there. And there's a document, the a Word document, that uh, is called a request for a repair. You download that document to your uh, PC and you fill it out and you email it to me, and then we uh, move from there. Okay. So I've got this. Uh, I'm about to power this up, and what we're going to do is exactly like we did last time. I suspect this to be a power supply issue, and we're going to check our main DC coming out of this connector right here. You see that red and black wire, and then we should have a negative and positive rail coming from this connector here. So let me get it powered up. All right, now I have it turned on. And let's see what we're getting. Can I get this over into into the shot here? And pull that up just a tad bit. I might not have it on on the device. Give me a second. Flip this up and double check that we are on. There we go. Let's check this one more time. Is on. I actually hear a buzzing coming from one of these transformers you probably won't be able to hear it but I definitely do why don't you want to bet we have some pretty leaky capacitors all right so I got it on I'm not seeing anything right now we go to our 9 volt voltage rails yeah look at that so we do have some very leaky capacitors of course one of them is causing an over voltage let's check out that main voltage rail again There we go. And there's our main rail. It finally came up. Yeah, it's wobbling all around as well. So eventually those steady out, even with the leaky capacitors. And the device will power on. But uh, one thing to note when you're looking at these, you see this elastic they use? Uh, look at how brown it gets. It actually gets uh, somewhat uh, conductive. And so it's not a good elastic, whatever they used in here, uh, to hold these components down. But this is primarily probably going to be a recap job. So I just need to price out all the components, and then uh, give the customer an email, let them know what it's going to cost to repair. And customer was notified, and parts were put on order, and parts have been received. So I'm now going to. Uh, take time to get all of these installed into here now I am slightly concerned about our uh, negative 9 and positive 9 voltage rail uh, with one of them being uh, closer to 15 that could be an issue outside of capa uh, the capacitors but I'll know more once I've replaced the capacitors and then go back through and retest those voltages if they look good However, and uh, we plug it in and the subwoofer operates fine, then we're good, obviously. But uh, I don't want to bore you with replacing a lot of capacitors on the board, and uh, you know, I don't have my typical setup. So I'm going to disconnect everything from here, get all of our new caps soldered in, and then we'll come back and do another inspection. And here we have it, as mentioned. 80 hertz signal, 0.9 volts RMS, and O scope. We're seeing 80 hertz at 55 volts, so quite a bit of amplification. I don't have the amplification turned all the way up. I also have this going to um, both the left and right channel. So, what happens if I just remove the right channel? Well, we lose a bit of amplification, but it's still there. So, 28 volts. On the, on the white or I assume left channel 
I think. I have to go back and look. But uh, let me put the red back in and pull the white out. We'll check, take a look at it. Okay. Uh, white's been removed and red is in and 28 volts. So basically it's split into two. Now I think the left channel is the LFE circuit. So I may be able to affect that. Yeah, there we go. With the uh, high pass, low pass filter. So yeah. That's the high and low pass filter, so I'm able to cut out the signal. And then, of course, the volume is going to increase and decrease with linearity. Uh, can I get this to stop running? I need to get my trigger down. There we go. All right. So this is actually better for y'all to view. Here goes the volume control. You can see as I increase volume, it goes up. Decrease volume. It goes down. So we do have linearity. Now the... Uh, filter basically once we get to a certain frequency it's just going to cut it out actually that one might be the volume control let me see uh, what do we got we got volume on bottom and then we got our low pass filter up top right here so bottom is volume, top is the low pass filter. All right, so I have those backwards. There goes the volume, and yes, we have linearity. Then our low pass filter. That should be allowing everything through, and then at some point it should cut out once we get below a certain R80 hertz frequency. There's a way for us to check that. And how we can do it is by just changing the frequency. So let me go to frequency. And we'll start stepping this up. 90, 100. And you can see that as it's stepped up, it starts to attenuate that signal. Yeah, we're only at 7 volts at 200. All right, cool. So we're gonna call this good. I'm gonna put it in the speaker and uh, put a tone in through it. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're done. All right. So moment of truth. Let's uh, let's power it up. Do we have uh, instant on? Yeah. Look, blue light. There we go. That's positive. Of course, I got this uh, sitting on its side because this feeder currently over layer because I super glued them together and then two part potsy JB welded after that super glue had set so hopefully they don't break again but uh, now with this on we got the volume and our uh, low pass filter turned all the way down let me come over here frequency let's go there there and let's turn on channel one. All right, so channel one is on. And let's give it some volume. subwoofer again there we go so 
what I've done for the customer is I've wrapped all the feet up individually and then put all the hardware in, in a separate box and this box will go beside the amplifier and into the crate or into the bigger box uh, prior to shipping and that should hopefully keep them from breaking again and actually if I you know put it down in between here and the uh, subwoofer that uh, help keep the subwoofer braced and uh, instead of rattling around I've also added some additional uh, packing material and got more to shove in there and then hopefully the return trip will be better than the uh, trip down to myself anyways uh, that's gonna do it for this repair uh, if you're new to this channel please consider subscribing if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're in need of a, a repair uh, look in the video description you'll find my Google site Google site it's like sites.google.com slash having fun repairs slash business and repairs or something silly like that go to it there's a word document you download a request for repair you fill it out on your desktop that word document and you send email it to me at having fun repairs gmail.com anyways uh, thank you for watching take care and goodbye Mark.